Welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Patrick Hoffmann, and in this second installment on our introduction series to simulation in Blender 3.6, I'd like to work on the particle system a bit more. First, let's see what we did in the last session. We created this small simulation area here. This is where the actual uh, particle simulation is taking place. And then we added uh, parts from the outside. This is where we are adding new particles to the simulation. They added from the outside and joined with the simulation particles. Then the position is adjusted for all of them. And then the output is rejoined with our actual geometry so we can see it in the viewport. But internally, all the particles also are stored and go back to the simulation input for the next frame, where they are then joined with the additional particles for the next frame. And the result is a very simple, simple particle system. And now let's change uh, the way we are controlling the movement a bit. Let's we first click on the offset here and move this over and drag this to the group input. And now if I head over to the modifier tab in the properties panel, I can see here that I have the uh, offset as a parameter now. So it's fr here from the outside and I can adjust it here on the outside. And I can adjust it live. So pretty cool, but I don't want to only um, adjust the general direction. The particles are, move, are moving and also like them to twirl and swirl around. And this is something I can do by adding a noise texture. And I will add it here between offset from the input and the offset here because this is currently just the, the offset is currently just one direction, but if I change this using a noise texture, it will be a direction and some noise. So I'm adding the noise, shift A, utilities, vector, vector math. Let me connect this between offset and offset. And here it already reads add, so I can add additional forces. And the force I want to add for this, I click here on the socket and drag the mouse over where there's nothing. And I search for noise and I choose noise texture color. And this will automatically connect my color output of the noise texture with the vector input of the add node. So now I'm adding this noise texture as a vector for each frame. And you see this actually is adding noise, but this is also making the particles shoot away in a straight diagonal line. That comes because the noise texture here, the color, it's three positive values between zero and one. That means for each frame, we are adding a bit along the y-axis, a bit on the red axis, that is the x-axis, and a bit on the blue axis, the z-axis. So we're adding some force for each frame along the three axes at once, and that means they're shooting away diagonally. We can fix this by subtracting 0.5 from the noise texture from each channel. And I can do this quickly by duplicating this node, Shift D, connecting it here in between. And now I click and drag down and type minus 0.5. And this is now the same as subtracting. And now we can see that the noise is now added and we have the movement from before. But um, this is too strong. I think this is too noisy. I would like the noise to be more uh, like uh, those um, wavy structures. And for that, let me reduce the scale to 2.5 for the moment. And now you can see that the uh, we can see the structures emerging. And uh, the more we reduce the scale, the bigger those structures are becoming. And um, you see, this is a bit weird. But if we reduce the scale, we get like bigger structures. So this is something you have to remember. Here for the noise texture, the effect is inverted. And let me move the scale over here and click on group input. And I want to make a tooltip for the scale here. So up here, I click N to open up the sidebar. Then I click group. And then here where we have for the inputs, where to read scale, I can call this noise scale. And the tooltip is inverted scale of the noise. And so if I hover now, you see we have the tooltip and somebody who is not that professional blender can see that the scale is actually inverted when he changes the things and makes things. This is a bit weird. So now that we have the scale of those structures, I'd also like to change a bit the strength 
of the noise texture because those stringy things they are still there and it comes because the strength is just a bit too much um, and I can reduce the strength by scaling the vector we are adding here and this is one something I can once again do with a vector math so let's duplicate this add node here move this over here let me open this up and change it to scale it's up here you know if I change the scale to something like 0 0.3 now you see that the um, effect of the noise is no longer as extreme and it's now looking a bit more like fire. So let me connect the scale here for the group input as well. And here I will not call it scale, but noise strength. Noise strength. Don't know what happened here. Now let me, me close this also and that one as well. And the next thing I'd like to add to the noise is I want this to change over time because it still is like the uh, particles, even though the, the strength is reduced, it's still like they're flowing around some stringy parts. It's not like they're, they're not like tangling. It's not changing over time. And this is something that I can add this change over time by changing the noise texture from 3D to 4D. The 4D is the, the fourth D is the time dimension and it's called W here. In other programs, uh, it's called evolution, Blender calls it W. Anyways, when I connect the seconds of the scene time to the W for the noise texture here, then the, um, those twirlings are changing over time and it's really like swirling, twirling, tangling, just like actual flames would be doing. And this is now already looking pretty cool. If I connect density to the group input as well, I can change it over here. And for example, I can set this to some lot bigger. And this is now already looking pretty cool. And this is really something I can work with, but there's still one thing I'd like to change. And that is the currently the particle system. It goes on forever and ever. And I'd like this to stop at some point. Uh, I'd like them to dissolve or be killed at some point. So. What we need to do is we need to compute the age. The age would be an attribute for each particle. So each particle would have its individual age. And this is something we can add by using the capture attribute node. So here we have our geometry and then as to use capture, capture attribute. And I connect this here. And now I can create an attribute for each point. So a float for each point and particles are points. So it's correct. And let's start at zero because it's the age and we want to count upwards. Then let's close this here and move this here over. I click and drag and I search for bar because I want to add this. Just like we join the geometry, I want to add this uh, up here to an uh, attribute from the simulation input. And now you see it's connected. And once again, here it's zero as well. And now the, the um, attribute of our points is connected to this attribute in the simulation output. And you see in the simulation output, we have this again as well. So we have to connect this over here. And now in its full circle, you see now we have a dashed line here on the left as well. And now that means we have this attribute inside. They are connected, but it's always zero because we're not counting up. And for that, I want to duplicate this add node and move this in between, go down and add any one for each frame. And okay, you cannot see anything at the moment, but let's make this show up here in the spreadsheet editor. And this we can do by connecting the value output here with the group output. And then we still have to give this a name. It's here in output properties and I call this H. And now we see here, uh, this has popped up. And let's move this down. And after simulating this, we should get some H values above one. So you see this goes up to 15. This is the frame we are at. So this has actually worked. And now what we can we do with this H? For example, we can delete 
particles based on the total lifetime. And you can do this by using the node delete geometry. Shift A, search delete geometry. Let me connect this here. And the selection should be computed from the age. Here I have the age. Then uh, let me move this over and search for bath. And here it's a bit down. We have, um, uh, let's, uh, let's do just some math. Let's not care at all. And here in the drop down, we have uh, greater than. This is what I was looking for. And that means, for example, if this uh, is greater than 50, my age, then this um, will become one. And that will be a means it will be deleted because this is what we do in the selection. This is Boolean. So everything that is older than 50 frames gets deleted. And you see this is working perfectly. And so let's add this as another um, parameter to our simulation. And for that, let me do Shift A, input group, group input. And now I have a group input here again. And let's connect this here, down here, and close this. And this here, which is currently called threshold, I will change into lifetime of the particles. And so if I increase this to 100, then our particles should now live up to 100 in frames and then be silently deleted. So this is now now also already pretty functional, the particle system, we have a lot of options. And the next thing I would like to do is I would like to add some shading to this. And this is what we're going to do in the next episode. So see you.